We'll now turn it over to our secretary. And I appreciate um, something you all said. He is inclusive. And it has been a real hallmark of his leadership. Um, and I'll just say between the two of us, as, as we've both grown in these roles, we've spent a lot of time particularly talking about our experiences meeting with tribal nations, visiting them around the country, and thinking deeply about you know, what we can do to make sure our programs are working for them. So I'm, I'm thrilled to introduce our leader, Secretary Pete Buttigieg. Well, uh, thank you very much, uh, Deputy Secretary Polly Trottenberg. And, and Polly's right, so often at the end of the day, we're, one of us uh, will walk into the other's office and say, just had uh, this really interesting conversation with tribal leaders here and uh, appreciate the shared commitment to making sure that, that we are uh, good partners and, and that we are engaged. Uh, thank you, Myla Booth, for uh, all of the work that, that you were doing for bringing this event together and, and for what you, Orlando Teller, and our uh, team have been doing on uh, as we work to take tribal engagement to the next level here at the department. Uh, and uh, thank you very much to, uh, uh, to uh, Miss Navajo Nation, uh, Valentina Klitzo, for that wonderful performance. I think we have another to look forward to before our hour is done, which we're really looking forward to. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Courtney, for uh, uh, sharing uh, your story, for reminding us uh, how that trajectory of public service can evolve to prepare a new generation. And importantly, I think, for reminding us that part of what's great about federal service is also the terms of employment leave space. Uh, for other things that are also very important, like that connection to uh, two ways of life that you, you so evocatively described for us. I felt as if I could uh, uh, smell the smoke a little bit as you were uh, richly describing uh, such an important tradition. Uh, and uh, Mr. Lamar as well for your, for your service uh, and for reminding us how there can be direct reinforcing relationship uh, between uh, uh, the important tactical work that you were trained to do and what was already in your heritage uh, that was such an asset to the American people. Um, <clears throat> we are here, of course, celebrating Native American Heritage Month at the Department of Transportation. And uh, I'm very uh, proud to be part of a team that is so committed uh, to making sure that, that we get this right. Um, and I say that also as somebody who uh, comes from uh, a community that uh, during my time as mayor, uh, became uh, the first in the state of Indiana to have land in trust, uh, a journey that had begun with the delegation to Washington during the Bill Clinton administration by the Pekagan Band of Potawatomi Indians, a reminder of how long the journey has been sometimes to get proper recognition. Uh, it was the uh, the Pekagan Band who taught me to uh, to say Boju by way of greeting and Megwatch by way of thank you, and taught me that the name of my hometown uh, was uh, San Baldanic, the, uh, the uh, ribbon town, uh, long before it was uh, that bend in the river was known as South Bend, Indiana. And I think there's something a little poetic in the fact that our area code 574 makes it very easy for me to always remember, at least until it changes, the number of federally recognized tribes uh, in the United States. Um, and uh, now arriving in this role with an understanding of the responsibilities and, and the opportunities uh, that are with us. Uh, serving in particular those who are uh, citizens twice over, tribal citizens and, belatedly, U.S. citizens. And I would add, who have made good on that citizenship as we approach Veterans Day by serving in the military at a higher rate uh, than uh, any other group of Americans, for which we're also thankful alongside the civilian federal service uh, that is represented. And lastly, let me just thank everybody participating online as well as here in the room with us. Um, there are so many wonderful examples of the relationship between uh, federal service uh, and tribal citizenship. Uh, one story I recently learned about was about a physicist, uh, Jerry Elliott uh, High Eagle, who authored the piece of legislation creating Native American Awareness Week, uh, which would eventually grow into the month that we celebrate today. Uh, and uh, he's somebody who is known for his four-decade career at NASA, a member of the mission control team during the moon landing, uh, who, among other things, played a pivotal role during the Apollo 13 rescue mission. And so uh, I enjoyed hearing that example because it reminds us uh, not to only conceive of the uh, relationship uh, between uh, uh, federal service and, and the federal government uh, and uh, uh, Native American communities is something that's either uh, the, the project of the moment or uh, a hundred years, hundreds year old distant history, uh, but a continuous thread that includes very recent history that, that we need to build on. Uh, our country could not uh, have reached the heights that, that it has 
without the extraordinary contributions of so many Native leaders through our history. And we know that when Native Americans have the freedom and opportunity to shape their destinies, and therefore, of, of course, to shape the destiny uh, of uh, our country, uh, then everyone is, is better off. And that's part of why, from the president on through, you have an administration right now, uh, the Biden-Harris administration, that's very deeply committed to honoring tribal sovereignty and empowering tribal self-governance. Uh, as was mentioned, we were delighted to see the Cherokee Nation become the first tribe in history to sign a tribal transportation self-governance compact with our department, giving control, flexibility, and decision-making authority over federal funds to the tribe, carrying out transportation projects on tribal land. Uh, it was the first of its kind, but certainly won't be the last. As a matter of fact, thanks to that leadership, uh, th there's a model that every tribe in the country can look at. And we're already entering negotiations with two more tribes, and we've heard from many more expressing interest in this process. I should also mention that the bipartisan infrastructure law is not only building roads and bridges and airports, uh, it's building this department in new ways, including creating the Office of Tribal Government Affairs uh, with the position of Assistant Secretary for Tribal Government Affairs, which will make it easier for us to be a good partner to tribes across the country in putting those infrastructure and dollars to use. And uh, of course, that office is already hard at work helping to deliver billions in new funding. And I've been very pleased to see not only uh, the, the funding uh, that has been uh, set aside or dedicated for tribal recipients, but also to see many tribes competing and winning in the discretionary grant process alongside uh, cities, states, port authorities, transit agencies uh, from around the country. Uh, so we are at a moment that I think uh, calls us to recognize the responsibilities of the federal government and the extraordinary opportunities uh, for not just the government, for, but for the country through better delivery of services and better engagement uh, in the nation-to-nation -nation relationships that any of us who are in federal service are responsible for. And uh, I'm very much looking forward to the discussion where we can unpack a little bit more of, of what was said and, uh, again, uh, as, uh, as Polly uh, said, uh, ensure that all of us, whether uh, tribal engagement is formally part of a uh, position description or not, uh, can ensure that we are doing a good job of serving those who are citizens twice over across the United States. So thank you again for joining us and looking forward now to our discussion.